What's going on Neon Nation and welcome back to the channel for some more Cyberpunk 2077 news. Today we have a ton of Cyberpunk 2077 news to go over from a lengthy interview with CD Projekt Red's John Mamace, where everything from censorship to multiplayer standalones to a Cyberpunk Nintendo Switch port to microtransactions to a potential release on Project Scarlet and the PS5 were talked about in full detail. We also have details on a new contest from CD Projekt Red, as well as a new snippet tease of what's to come in the robust soundtrack of Cyberpunk. First let's jump into this interview with head of CDPR's Krakow office, John Mamace during PAX Australia. When it comes to censorship of Cyberpunk 2077 in Australia in particular, Mamace says he doesn't think that the game will have any issues in this department, and references South Park The Stick of Truth as an example of a game who had issues clearing classification. John Mamace goes on to say, quote, I was concerned about censorship because I know Australia has issues with drugs and the other thing is sexualized violence. Those are the two things that can kill your product there. I've been looking into it over the last couple days and it seems like we're safe. You don't get rewarded for using drugs as far as I know and the player does not do any kind of sexualized violence at all where it's really tasteless, we wouldn't really do anything like that. Now yes, incentivized drug use has led to the bannings of most recent We Happy Few in Australia and titles in the past. I think there's a very muddy line here as to what they would classify as an incentive as reflex boosters and combat sims are technically drugs that give you boosts, which might be classified as incentives. I'm gonna assume Cyberpunk will be fine here since these boosters don't really represent real world equivalents, but there's still a margin for there to be issues. Fallout 3 did have issues with incentives related to drug use and was originally banned until they changed the name of Morphine to MedX. We don't really know how sexual the game is at the current moment, but there is a central theme to a lot of the games that have been banned in the past, which is high impact bloody violence. We've already seen gameplay of V slicing through enemies like butter, or brutal decapitations, and there is a dismemberment system, and I think if it does get censored or banned in Australia, this will be the main culprit. In Japan, decapitations will be censored as will nipples, because that's just how Japan operates, and The Witcher did have censored versions for the Middle East, so just keep that in mind. When it comes to multiplayer, Mamace mentioned that CDPR are expanding and can work on multiple AAA titles at once. Mamace says, quote, It's public knowledge that we want to make multiple AAA titles at the same time in the company. We haven't been able to, but now we're growing to a certain extent and we might be able to do that in the future, at least that's our hope. We'll see how well Cyberpunk does. I like Cyberpunk, I'd like to keep making Cyberpunk games, and I like The Witcher, I'd like to keep making those games. It could be anything, even some new IP or some licensed IP. When it comes to next generation consoles, Mamace mentions, quote, We'll see what we can do with those. The more powerful the technology or the consoles, the better it is for me as a game developer. We already know CDPR stands on microtransactions, but Mamace clarifies that he thinks it's a bad idea to do microtransactions in a game, even though they are profitable and good for business. He mentions that they are willing to give this up for the goodwill of the customers. I think this is a sentiment that as the days go on will mean more and more to us as consumers. It's getting really crazy out there with microtransactions, enough for a lot of people to take a step back from the keyboard or controller and reevaluate their entertainment choices. John reiterates that CDPR are following The Witcher's approach when it comes to DLC and that when it comes to a release date, some of the people in the studio feel good and some are a little nervous, but this is a normal feeling. The directive is that they need to keep the date. John Mamace also claims that everyone is working really hard right now because the deadline is tight and the game is really large in scope. The vibe is of excitement though as they're kind of doing their world tour at the moment, showcasing the game at various conferences and this is a big momentum boost for them. He mentions a healthy, extrinsic kind of pressure that makes the team really excel. I know the word crunch gets thrown around a lot but maybe, just maybe, it's simply hard work and passionate effort. Deadlines are a part of a ton of industries and yes, game development takes a collaborative creative effort but the automatic assumption shouldn't be that developers are burnt out zombies selling their soul. As we know, multiple studios have been working on Cyberpunk 2077, namely Wrocław and Krakow, and Mamace clarifies that in terms of content, Krakow has developed about a third of the game, mainly in the new scene system where dialogue and cinematics collide within the context of the gameplay. This is a system where you're fully in control of your character within the cutscene, which doesn't take you out of that immersion, and this is a big element as well as some other things according to Mamace. When it comes to story, it seems like the team has learned that finishing the story sooner and allowing for time to brush up the minutia is pivotal. You don't really know how good a story is until it's played in its entirety, and so if this process happens earlier, you can catch it and change elements that you don't feel that are right. Regarding a possible Switch port, John mentions that it probably won't be likely, but you never know since The Witcher 3 released on the Switch. By the way, The Witcher 3 released on Switch only a couple days ago, so if you want to experience this beautiful open world on the go, make sure to go check that out. Regarding Cyberpunk 2077's story, he mentions that on the surface it's pretty simple and that the whole story revolves around the tech of the Immortality Chip. 
Simple is kind of a trigger word for open world RPG fans, but CDPR has also mentioned in the past that they will explore harsh elements like the politics of cyberpunk, morality, and transhumanism to some degree, so in my opinion, simple won't necessarily mean shallow. The stakes are fairly high for Cyberpunk 2077 as there are obviously a lot of internal financial expectations. Next up, let's take a brief look at a snippet of potential music teased by Paul Leonard Morgan, who's working on the soundtrack amongst others. Next, we have confirmation of a photography contest from CD Projekt Red and Cyberpunk 2077. They initially teased this not too long ago with the hashtag capture cyberpunk, and we speculated it could be a photography contest or a photo mode tease, so I guess we were half right on that one. In any case, whip out those iPhones and DSLRs because there are some insane prizes up for grabs for those who capture their city in the most cyberpunk way they can. For the submission phase, you must find somewhere in your city or area with a true cyberpunk vibe and take a photo that best captures it. You have to submit before December 16th with up to 5 photos and winners will be chosen from those. It's really awesome to see how much additional things the community can get involved with with cosplay and now the photography contest. Thanks for watching and for more Cyberpunk 2077, join Neon Nation by subscribing to the Neon Arcade.